Hello and welcome to this ONDR Modriol video, Jaguar XK8 alternators, how to repair them and how they fail, etc. Now, in the Jaguar XK8, XKRs, X100s, they use Denso uh, electrical equipment, um, and the Denso alternators are generally very reliable and they're quite easy to repair rather than replace the whole unit. If you did want to Replace it with a new one. They're costing at the moment in 2022 in the UK, typically about 215 to 250 pounds. And you can potentially repair them for uh, a tenth of that cost, between 25 and 35 pounds, depending on which components are actually broken. If you're interested in purchasing a new one, the part number for the 4 litre is LNC1800AA. The 4.2 litre has a slightly different part number. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it is basically the same alternator, but it is a different part number, uh, C2C1310. In order to repair it and remove it, you're going to need some basic tools. I actually did this job on my alternator quite some time ago and I hadn't uh, taken note of the bolt uh, sizes, etc. But you're going to need a, a basic socket set, some screwdrivers, but you're not going to need a soldering iron. There's no actual soldering or electrical work needed other than bolting components on and off. I'm going to break this video down into our usual format into several sections. First of all we'll talk about the general symptoms you have when your um, your uh, alternators are failing. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a discussion as why we think they fail. Uh, thirdly how to actually remove the alternator itself from the engine bay and finally how to repair it on a bench just by replacing some basic components. Okay, so what are the typical symptoms of a failing alternator? Um, the voltmeter in your, if you're lucky enough to have the three gauges in the center uh, above the console there, the voltmeter should always read 13 volts when the engine's running, it should read straight up. As you're probably aware, the voltmeter isn't a true voltmeter unless uh, the ignition is on without the engine running, in which it, it is. But when the engine's running, it just acts as a uh, sort of failure gauge, if you would. It should, uh, the the, uh, the indicator should be straight up at 13 volts if it's charging correctly. If it flicks over to 9 or 17, it's basically a fault in the electrical system. So what you tend to get, if, the, if you get a reading of 17 volts, it's all the way over to the right uh, when the engine's running, um, there is an alternate that's uh, indicating there's a fault and that's probably the regulator on your alternator because it's unable to control the voltage it's charging back into the battery it's overcharging the battery if you were to leave it like this it would actually just destroy your battery so please be careful uh, take note of the voltmeter position of that needle the other symptom then is uh, you may also get on top of the, the needle going over to the 17 volts or uh, giving you an error, you also have fluctuating lights. The back lights of the gauges and the engine RPM will probably fluctuate up and down. This is normally because uh, the rectifier, rectifier within the, uh, the alternator has blown basically the diodes, which are helping the alternator convert, convert AC uh, voltage into DC has actually failed so it's then leaking AC into the electrical system which you can imagine isn't great and hence the lights are fluctuating up and down. I know this myself because I actually blew up my rectifier by welding with the battery still connected. Not something I would advise anybody to do. It was an accident. I had actually disconnected, reconnected to move windows etc and then I forgot to take it off again but it was enough power to blow the diodes in the alternator and had re to replace the rectifier. Okay, so why did they fail? Um, other than being an idiot like me and welding with the battery connected. Um, first of all, we need to look at the location of the alternator. Here's a quick diagram sectional view, if you would, of the engine bay. You've got the radiator at the front, the engine, and the alternator sitting just at the bottom there, just in front of the air filter sorry, oil filter, uh, at the front of the engine. Um, you can see it just there. And the, ele the, the red box at the back is where everything is connected, and that's where the electrical uh, components are. And you can see them here. So this is the back of the alternator. You can see the location of the regulator 
in, in those three slots there, you can see the heat sink for the regulator. It's right at the back of the alternator. Now that regulator has got a heat sink to keep the, it cool, but it's obviously at the rear and it's out of the airflow. If you consider that, what JICA have done, in order to ease the cooling of that uh, regulator, those electrical components at the back of the alternator, it's uh, added an air scoop, you can see on the left-hand side there, to funnel cold air from underneath uh, the engine into the back of the alternator area to cool that down. You can see this is what it actually physically looks like at the bottom of the car. This I took this picture uh, quite a while ago when I painted my sump after I dropped it off. After I did my cam change tensioners and guides some time ago. In order to assist that scoop, there is actually an alternator air duct as well, which actually helps to segregate the cold air from the front of the engine and the warm air coming from the back of the radiator. Uh, it, that actually looks like this when it's correctly fitted to a coupe in my case. You can see it actually uh, scoops the air uh, away from the warm air and into that duct. Something like this. So you can see that I've, I've highlighted the orange there is the warm air that passes by the side of the alternator, but the colder air coming underneath the car goes past that duct or is funneled by the duct and then it goes through that little uh, snorkel. The only problem we have is obviously when that's not fitted correctly, you don't get the proper airflow and then the um, uh, the regulator overheat and blow up. But also I think the, the my theory is that that snorkel also acts very well to to uh, flush water. If you go through a bit of a flood, you can actually just push water directly directly into the back of your alternator, which can't be very healthy. So I'm thinking really two modes of failure, probably overheating by the snorkel not fitted correctly or you're missing your duct, but uh, more probably water being fed into the back of the alternator. If you go through a flood, be careful. You don't want it too deep. Okay then, so if you've got problems with your alternator, how easy is it to remove? Um, the alternator basically is, is located directly under the air filter housing on the left hand side of the engine he here. <laughs> I've, I've shown the air, it's under there, it's under there. Uh, I've done a video all about how to take that air, the air filter and the um, air box off. I'll not cover that in this video. Look at episode 36. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to uh, guide you to that. Once you've got that uh, air box out, you'll see clearly the alternator underneath the uh, nestled on the side of the engine. You can see that with the circle. Um, I hadn't got a picture of how, how to how I remove the electrical items, but basically there's an earthing strap connected with a nut as you can see at the top there, there's also an electrical socket. You need to just push a clip in and pull it out. And it's listed, that's the electrical connections done. Um, very easy to access, uh, not from above, from underneath the car. You need to have it uh, up in the air slightly or on ramps to get at that, uh, the electrical connections. Now then to actually remove the unit itself, there's a top bolt and a bottom bolt. The top bolt is quite a long bolt. You can access from the top and pull it all the way out towards the radiator and move. There is also a shorter bottom bolt which you can access again from under the car and then the alternator should be loose once you've got the, those two bolts out. Obviously you need to, before. Uh, sorry I forgot, before you need to do that you need to remove your uh, serpentine belt or your fan belt which is quite easily just uh, compress the uh, belt tensioner and it comes straight off. Sorry about that. Once you've got the uh, alternator loose, it won't directly come out, but you can actually push it towards the radiator uh, or the fan pack, turn it on its end, and you can pull it out um, with a bit of jiggle, jigging and jigging, poking around. You'll find that top hose needs to com be compressed a bit to get it out, but at least on the uh, XK, you can remove it from the top. Okay. Um, my, interestingly, my Denso part number was uh, LJA1800AE because it was a very early part number. I think the Denso number is 101217632, which is quite an old Denso alternator part number. It's very difficult to find parts with that number specifically, but it's a generic, uh, it's quite a generic alternator. 
how to repair it then. Okay, how to get the bits. So for, once you've got this, uh, your alternator on the bench, you need to remove the outer case. You have to remove those uh, three retaining nuts circled at the top there. I believe they're M10 nuts. So you need your M10 socket to do that. When you removed it, you'll see the alternator parts look something like this. You've got the regulator at the top there, the brush holder in the middle, um, and the rectifier is, is everything else together with that electrical connection, that uh, big uh, uh, stud that's sticking out. The Denso regulator then is uh, part number JLM20187, if you're interested, or 02G285. They retail on uh, the internet, eBay, etc. for £35. Uh, if you want to get one, it's quite easy to locate those. The actual brush holder, I did replace mine. Uh, it wasn't particularly worn out, but while I was in there, I thought for, a, what was it, 13 dollars 19 cents just change that as well um so there you go there's the brush holder and also this is uh, the the rectifier now um these are quite difficult to get hold of uh, it's a denzel rectifier uh, 136741 uh, slash rtf 49899 again that's very cheap if you can find one obviously um, it's very difficult to cross-reference part numbers. So basically, I've used the philosophy when I change mine. Uh, if it quacks like a duck, if it walks, walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Um, so <laughs> it looked like the part I took off. So I worked on that basis and it worked fine. So there's a couple of things unique about the Denso uh, rectifier on this alternator. One is the the, uh, the Ys. Uh, within the top pressing there, this Y shapes I've circled, and also the location of that screw fixing opposite the stud, uh, that the copper looking stud sticking out. If you find one that looks like that, chances are it's the right one. I thought at the time, for the sake of £25, it was worth the risk. Uh, if it didn't work out, I'd have to fork out 200 or whatever. Okay, so that's the rectifier. So in order to remove these, you need to remove the screws um, and the regulator, sorry, you know, to remove, the, you need to remove the three screws to remove the regulator and the brush holder, as I circled there in the middle. To actually remove the regulator, there are four actual screw points uh, around the pr sort of the circumference of the regulator there of the circular uh, alternator shape, and obviously they need to screw out horizontally to remove. You can see them. Uh, a bit more clear in this picture. This is with all my new bits on now, so uh, it, it, it's looking quite clean. They got reassembly, then is the reverse of disassembly, and then fingers crossed you've got the right parts and everything's okay. I was very lucky it worked for me. Um, I'd like to thank um, this video, Alan M. Beatty, because he had some problems with his alternator and we try and diagnose it, and uh, I thought, oh, well, I'll. I'll use my pictures I took, was it three, four years ago now, uh, and try and put this video together. So thanks, Alan, for reminding me I'd done this work, and it's probably worth sharing with uh, with you, fellow Jaguar enthusiasts. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Xcade videos.